right, so for this voice wise report, um, the case study that we're gonna use this time is a 73 year old female who came to us with a lot of whole body inflammation, back pain and knee pain. And these were the things that she came to us and said she wanted to work on before she did her voice report. So everyone sees the same executive summary when they open their VoiceWise report. The executive summary is just reminding you guys that there's a lot of different data that gets run and scanned on the back end to produce this report for you. Over 1,100 data points, in fact. And everyone is going to have a summary of results. You're going to notice that the areas that are highlighted are things that are fluid. So yours on the highlighted area may look different. And that would be become because different results came up for you versus this person. So um, this individual, you'll notice the first thing that's listed in section one is always the first pillar of health. And we're going to explain what pillars are here in a minute. Then it tells you what uh, organ or system in the body is correlated to that pillar. And then it grabs your two systems that need the most support. It'll say the first system and what it is. It'll say the second system and what it is. Then it'll tell you if it's more on the emotional side, the physical side, or both. And then it'll also tell you which three areas of the body are contributing most to that system being out of balance and needing support. So right away, we know this individual came to us with knee pain and the knees come up as an emotional influence to the immune system. So right off the bat, that gets us thinking, Oh, okay, well, if my knee pain is showing up under my immune system and it's emotional, then I want to use the resources to figure out the emotional connection between knees and immune. And we'll get into how to do that in a second. Then the fourth area of the summary is always going to be the pH environment. And that's for everybody. And that's because uh, your pH environment for your whole body is always meant to be alkaline except for your stomach acid. That's the only part of your body that needs to be acidic. Everything else should always have a alkaline pH. That's the fluid behind your eyes, in your joints, all of it. And that keeps the environment healthy and free from dis-ease or cellular changes that we don't want to happen. Now, before we go on, your report might also show pH environment twice. That is yeah. not a mistake. I want to repeat that. It's not a mistake. There's 10 systems that can possibly be the top two that need the most support. If pH comes up twice, that means that it really needs support. Like you really need to focus on creating an alkaline environment in your body. So again, that's not a mistake. If it comes up twice on this summary, it means it's that important is what it means in a short way of saying it. So then on the next page, we wrote out a little key for the report. You're going to see percentages all throughout the test. Z think of it zero to 100, just like you would on a school paper, except for our purposes, 50% or better is a good grade. That's passing. passing. That's wonderful. Maybe not a good grade. It's, well, passing. it's passing. It's definitely passing. So the stuff that we want to support first is usually the items that are under 50% unless you just have nothing under 50% and then take the lowest percentage and work your way up. And we'll notif we'll let you know this, right? On the report, you'll see this in red. Yes. You'll see this as a priority uh, on the pages three and pages four. The other cool thing about this test is that it measures both emotional and physical factors. And the reason this is really important is because sometimes you can have an organ or a system in the body that's not working correctly, and it's not because of anything physical you are or not doing, or you are or are not doing. So for example, I was working with an individual who had low liver numbers and they're having trouble with their liver for a couple of years, actually. Um, and when we did her report, we found that the issue with the liver was actually emotional, not physical. So she did a little exercise where she held her liver at once or twice every single day and just said a little prayer of love to that liver. And within a few weeks, all of her liver numbers started coming back up, which meant that we could have thrown every physical remedy in the book at it, and it wouldn't have moved the needle like just simply turning around that emotional connection. So that's why we always want to measure both is because we want to know what's going to help you heal the fastest. 
Then we also look at if something is acute or chronic. Chronic is much more common. You'll see that come up more often. Chronic usually means long-term or ongoing imbalance, whereas acute is usually more recent and there's a possibility of inflammation. So these are the five pillars of health and everyone should have five pillars of health on their report. The one that's gonna be in red is the one that is the lowest pillar. And so as you can see, there are five pillars. And the reason we have pillars is because these are things that affect multiple areas of function in the body at once. Your oxygenation, your hydration, your mouth health, your nutrition, and your emotions. They all play really significant roles in everything that the body has to do. So for this example, we have hydration come up as being the lowest pillar that needs support. So first thing we wanna do is, okay, let's check water quality. Um, is the water distilled? Is it reverse osmosis? Is it structured? And if you need more guidance on your water, how much water? Are how, you yeah, drinking? how much water are you, are you drinking? Drinking only forty or fifty ounces, and we mean plain water, not lemon water, not things in it, not Correct. things that's just water. Yeah. Um. So also the you know how much you're drinking. Then she obviously spoke about the quality of water, and then the last piece is is it warm to hot? Yes. Right. I mean, warm to hot water is 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 really great for your for your body, for your immune system, for your circulation, for everything. And 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 this correlation, you know, before when she spoke about um, an organ going to a system, those are going to be impacting here. It's kind of this is a double double edge, right? So the adrenals are impacting hydration and hydration adrenals, right? If you think about adrenals, that's your fight or flight, mm -hmm. right? That's your energy. So that means if if this person's in constant inflammation, which is what they had presented with, you know, then adrenals make sense because adrenals is going to be one of your predominant things to help with inflammation. The adrenal glands actually control the inflammation response for every single organ in the body. So if, if this yes. is off, that means if the inflammation is up and the adrenals are exhausted, your hydration is going to suffer, right? So you also might need not just hydration, but minerals because we're talking about the adrenals and, and needing to feed it some more things so that it can work against the constant inflammation that this person might be dealing with. Right. So again, we're just kind of painting a picture that here the pillars and the associated pillar with that organ goes both directions, right? The circulatory system, uh, for example, is affecting the mouth and the mouth is also affecting circulation. So this is a two-way street, unlike the system, which we'll get on to the next page, right, where it's more, of a, it's more of a one-way street, which we'll explain. So for this individual, if all they wanted to do is tackle this first pillar right here, there's a couple of ways they can do it. The first way is to pay attention to these one-two steps. So the one-two steps are always going to relate to the pillar that showed up for you in red. So that's the first thing you can do that will affect the most number of things. That's the first option. Yep. The next option is if you go all the way down to the last page, it says click here for full list of health resources. You click on that link, oh, which we, which, which yours is clickable, even if mine is not. Yes. There's is clickable. Yep. It's going to go to a whole list of, of resources. Yeah. And one of those resources is going to be a video on water. So look at your hydration, think, okay, uh, or look at your pillar, think, okay, it's hydration. Great. That's related to water. Look at all the different resources. Oh, there's a water video. Let me check that out. Um, then the other thing that you can do is you can go to the glossary of terms, because this is the new glossary of terms that we built out and go hydration. Oh, adrenals came up for hydration. Great. I'm going to hold my cursor over adrenals, click on that. And it's going to take me to an explanation of how hydration is impacting the adrenal glands. So hydration helps the adrenal glands balance fluids, regulate blood pressure, produce stress handling hormones like cortisol and maintain energy levels, ensuring your body runs smoothly and stay he stays healthy. So we give you a description of how it connects to that pillar yep. for each organ, right? So adrenals might show up in other pillars that you'll see in the table of contents. Yes. And again, this glossary of terms for pillars is on the master list of resources that you can click on on the sixth page. Yep. 
You'll click on that. It'll take you to an Excel spreadsheet that lists out every resource we have. And, and you're going to literally look for, it's going to say this exact thing, glossary of terms for pillars on VoiceWise. Yep. So this is a great reference tool for you guys. And then obviously the next thing we're going to do is give you recommendations so literally for everything. And it's going to be different. So just because the Adrenals for Hydration has these recommendations, it would have different recommendations if it was in a different pillar. Right. So, or if it was a different organ. Or yeah, or obviously yes, yeah. obviously if it was a different organ. <laughs> but if it's in the same pillar, you know. So we we definitely are uh, trying to give you as much direction as possible. So this can almost be, if you wanted it to be a standalone, meaning you you wouldn't even have to come to one of these things. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like a lot of content and we're going to be adding content to this. And this content is the kind of stuff that I would be explaining and going over in a one-on-one -on -one appointment anyway. I wanted to give this information to you guys because sometimes I don't have time to go over everything in a single appointment. So this is great for you guys to pace it at your own timing and you know just work through one aspect of your health at a time and here are all the resources to do exactly what comes up. Yeah. So as you can see, right, even if we were, if we were going through this report, you see that adrenals and, and hydration is needing support, but here's another one that is below 50% that might need support, right? Emotions and needs. And she mentioned knee pain was one of her biggest concerns when she first came to us. So what I would have her do in this instance is go to the glossary of terms. So again, we're going to the glossary. Mm -hmm. And on the table of contents, we go to emotions, and then we go down to knees, and we click on knees, and it talks about the emotional representation or correlation between the knees and dysfunction. And he here's a cool thing. If you're reading anything on the emotions, <laughs> this is just an exercise that we recommend for, for anybody. If you read it and you wholeheartedly feel like that does not speak to you, I would highly recommend just taking a second look at it. Because I would say 95% of the time, when we give someone an emotional exercise, and they're like, oh, no, 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 like, you know, no, no, that's not me. Yeah. Or here are the things that didn't relate to me. When we go deeper, a little bit further and kind of just, you know, let it all out, usually 95% of the time, not all the time, but a, a good majority of the time, when they finally are really honest with themselves, they'll see that the things that they think don't apply to them the most is usually the things they need to work on the most and the things that are hidden the most. Because it's almost like it's like your subconscious way of protecting you to the most ultimate degree <laughs> that it's going to say, oh, no, obviously this is not you. Maybe this, but definitely not that. The things that you're like, yeah, this is definitely not me. Or that, you know, I'm definitely not stubborn or prideful, then that's usually the things that are going to probably be speaking to you the most. So that's just a tidbit when we're going into, you know, emotional connections to different organs on the emotional pillar. And that goes for us too. I mean, just the other week, I did a test for myself and there were some, some things that came up about not honoring yourself and about not... Um, not accepting compliments oh, well God. Yeah, that's and things right. like that. that was, yeah. So it was a couple of weeks ago and <laughs> I was literally, I was like, oh, uh, which part of this report do you not? She's like, well, it's this part that, that like, I have to like uh, accept accolades. Yeah. It was accepting compliments and accolades. Yeah. So that's pretty much the premise. And of I was it. like, no, no, I don't really think that that's me. But then, but then we started talking about it out. and I was yeah. like, I was like, well, you know, you were on with your patient today they were crying because they had this big breakthrough and they thanked you for it. What did you do? Well, I didn't say anything. I just kept <laughs> telling them like how amazing they were. And I was like, well, then there you go. Right. I mean, you can't even accept the, the compliment and, and to take the moment and smell the roses. Right. So we're not you just know? saying this, this happens to us too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, so we're trying to give you guys also tools so that you can also reflect and get to that next layer because you might not have, uh, you know, a Matthew sitting next to you to um, point those things out very yeah. specifically. <laughs> yeah. But at first she was like, oh no, do, do I need to get more referrals? Is that what it is? Um, and I was, you know, do I need to ask for, you know, referrals or do I need to ask for recommendations? I was like, no, you just, 
just say thank you. Just say thank you, <laughs> like for what they are, you know, saying that you what did for them. So it's uh, it's really interesting what happens when you really uh, dig deep into it. And again, here is some recommendations, right? On some of the emotional stuff, we really went into uh, deep uh, stuff, um, uh, not just emotional stuff, but as you can see, there's incorporating anti-inflammatory foods into the diet um, that that are really going to help, particularly with the knees. So even though, you know, not everything is just, oh yeah, just be honest with yourself. There, there's a lot of different steps that one can take. Sorry, sorry, dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, and, and so we definitely want you to use this and, you know, go to every pillar and every organ that comes up and you can just focus on that alone. And that will shift so many things for you, even if you didn't make it past this page <laughs> and that glossary. Yep. So when in doubt, start there. <laughs> when in doubt, start right here. It's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, those are the pillars. Yep. So, then, so then we get into systems. And like Matthew said earlier, there are 10 systems total that we're measuring. And we're going to highlight the top two for you guys. Uh, does, yes, everyone has the same five pillars on their report. Yeah. What's going to be different is always, the, obviously the percentages and the uh, organs associated with that pillar. Yes. Um, so then for this individual, the immune system came up as their first system that needed support. And in this case, their uh, lower bar, you'll, you'll notice there's a blue bar and an orange bar. And the orange bar is lower. So that means it's actually on the emotional side that it needs more support. Um, and for her, the areas that are impacting that are the breast, the knees, and the thymus. Now, since those all have an emotional connection, you could also go to the glossary of terms for emotions and look and see, okay, is there a correlation between breast and knees and thymus? Um, and if there is, then that can get you to start thinking about what that emotional connection might be. And then you could do the emotional recommendations to help support the immune system. That would be one way to approach it if it came up as emotions are actually your lower percentage. And that will be highlighted again on page one in your summary because it'll list the system and it'll list if it's more on the emotional or the physical side. So again, under her summary of results, it's the immune system listed second and it's listed as an emotional influence. Yeah. So the other great thing is, is that we also have clickable resources, mm -hmm. not on this sample report, but on, on yours, on your live electronic report. You also have clickable resources, particularly to enhance the immune system. So it's going to go to a video or a resource that, you know, I would highly recommend, you know, connecting with and watching. And it's going to help that. And as you help that, it's going to help the breast, the knees, and the thymus. This is what we mean by it's one way. That by doing this one thing, by helping the immune system, right, it's going to be helping these things, correct? I mean, right. These are contributing yeah. to the immune system the most. They are. They're just, it's just saying they're more on the emotional side though. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, that's a learning resource that directly targets all kinds of remedies and uh, support options for the immune system. So here you go. It lists the second most needed supported system, right? And it gives you a resource, again, another right. resource that's directly correlated to musculoskeletal system. Then you have the most impactful factor, right? So this is taking into account all the different organs that you're running through and saying, how often does, is there an organ that shows up the most across multiple systems? Mm -hmm. So here we not only list the organ, but we list the associated systems that it's showing up for. And again, we're listing out a resource that is clickable, that goes to something that gives you um, something to literally do and start taking action on that's going to not only affect probably multiple systems, but definitely your breast health. Right. So for example, this should take you to a video that's just about breast health. Uh, then this is on page five, you have the masters of function. So this is the secondary priorities, right? So this is everything that didn't make it into the top two. So this is if you really want to geek out so that if you do multiple reports, you can see how things maneuver on a month to month basis, right? That's usually what we recommend is that, you know, you want to leave 
uh, there's there's different levels of change for the body and healing, right? So it goes three days of healing, then seven days of healing, then 21 days, and then 90 days. 30 days. 21 days, and then 90 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we usually, yeah. So, so if you're doing 21 days of healing, then we thought doing this once a month is uh, a pretty good frame of reference uh, because by the time you get the report and start doing stuff, then, you know, 21 day, days later after you finally get this report and, and, and do things and start kind of making changes, it, it'll be 30 days. And that's why we usually recommend doing this every, every about 30 days or so. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of different systems here uh, that aren't listed on that next page, but here you have hormone, circulatory, respiratory, lymphatic, pH, skin and hair, digestive and nervous system is what we're measuring at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, then in this last page, page six, again, we're listing out all the organs in alphabetical order. So obviously this is a female report, but if it was a male report, instead of seeing breasts, uterus, and ovaries, ovaries you would see prostate, testicles and chest yeah and here again we highlighted things that are going to be dynamic right so the things that are going to be dynamic are the health percentages that you're seeing and here instead of having a breakdown of uh, a physical score and an emotional score this is combining the scores and giving an average kind of like the health pillars yep. right so the health pillars are taking into consideration the the physical and emotional within that aspect um and then again you're going to see if it's acute or chronic and then if it's physical, emotional, or possibly both, and or you might even see things like strong emotional. And what that means is that it's very much emotional. Like if there was something that you were going to focus on, you'd focus more on the emotional side. Because um, the physical side probably wouldn't get you the results that you're looking for quickly. Yeah. So that's kind of the idea. And then, so we have a question here. So if the numbers are at least 50% or over, then it's okay for now or passing or passing, as you say, secondary priorities. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, let's just say you had every number above 50%. I would still take the lowest of that and start doing those things to keep momentum. You know, we're in this world where we're constantly getting bombarded with uh, pollution and heavy metals, heavy metals and Organic air phosphates yeah, yeah. and air quality. And, you know, even the food that we eat has heavy metals in it. There's no escaping it. Um, or, you know, I, I know that uh, recently up in uh, the Northeast of the States, it was getting a lot of pollution from chemical spills. So we're always being, yeah, we're always being bombarded by stuff. So uh, even if you have nothing, uh, below uh, 50%, um, then maybe another recommendation would be going to this last page and seeing if there's anything below 50% um, here on just specific organs and then going back to the glossary and just looking up those organs, mm -hmm. right? So like, let's just say it was kidneys uh, or I guess let's take a real example. Uh, so let's just say it was um, sinuses or even liver. Liver would be a good one because that's a major organ. Yeah, so liver is 44%. Right. And emotional. So what I would probably do for sure. Right. Is first, I would start to see if there is liver and emotion, which there is, but there's liver and nutrition. And there is liver and hydration. So I would be going to those three. I would start with emotions and then I would go to those three other pillars to see what kind of information and recommendations I can to support the liver immediately, right? Because the pillars are overarching, right. right? If you can support the organ in the three places that the that that you saw on the different pillars, um, then you'll be able to kind of go to town and really not just bump up those pillars, but bump up the liver in general in all facets, right? If you're bumping it up emotionally, nutritionally, and hydration, it's kind of like, I mean, what else is there with the with the liver? So again, you're just going to click on that. It's going to bring you down and it's going to explain the connection to the emotions and then giving you some really good recommendations. So that's another strategy that I would definitely implement if you have all your pillar scores above 50% and you don't see anything that bad on the systems, then I would come down here, pick out an organ that you want to support the most go to the glossary, see how many times you can find it, read all about it and follow the recommendations. Uh, so that's, that's going to be a great way.
or if you just have one area of your body that you're really concerned about, regardless of what the percentage is, if you want to know how to support that area better, follow those same steps. See how many times it comes up, go to the glossary, click on each one, see what it says for you. Yeah. So like, let's just say even brain is 52% that's passing, but you're like, man, I've always had some like brain fog. Great. Go, go exactly. to brain on the glossary and see where it is and see what you can start doing about it. You know, and, and that's why we, we built so much content <laughs> is to, again, give you the ability to take control of your health.